everyone. Today we're going to learn how to configure the Challenger 650's FMS for takeoff in X-Plane. The relevant menus will be Perfinit, VNAV Setup, and Takeoff Ref. These procedures can be applied to other Collins Proline equipped aircraft that have the FMS 3000, 5000, and 6000. We will start with the Perfinit menu. To access the Perfinit menu, press the Perf key. If you do not see the main Perf menu, press the key again and then press Perfinit. Alternatively, if you are on the flight plan page, press the line select key next to Perf init. There are three pages in Perf init. On the first page, we have the associated weights. To change the weight measurement between metric and imperial, this is done in the airframe manager per aircraft and only available in career mode. Click on edit avionics options and under CSU, you can change the weight measurement. The weights such as aircraft BOW and passenger weight are drawn from the defaults page, which can be changed as needed. To access the defaults menu, Press Index, Next, and then Defaults. There are five pages within the Defaults section. Once you're happy with the weights, go back to the Perf Init menu. Next, enter the relevant information for your flight. As a rule of thumb, the more information you add, the more accurate the performance calculations will be. On page two, the average winds per flight segment, climb, cruise, and descent can be entered, but it is not required. ISA deviation can be entered as well. Deviation data can be found on your flight plan and real-time data can be found on your PFD. On page three, we have the fuel and time calculations. Just like the weights page, it is drawn from the defaults page, but can also be modified for a more accurate assessment. The fuel flow correction, however, cannot be modified on this page and must be done on the defaults page. And when you are satisfied with the numbers, click Execute. Next, click VNAV Setup. Like the Perfinit pages, these speeds are drawn from the defaults page. Modify the speeds as desired for your flight. On the Climb and Descent pages, pages 1 and 3, below Speed and Altitude Limit, there is a blank field which allows for an additional limitation. For example, you are departing from an airport that has a 200 knot limit up to a certain altitude. On page two, you can modify your cruise speed. SEL is the default speed mode. LRC, long range cruise, will give you the maximum range based on your cruising altitude and weight, but at a reduced speed. M cruise, maximum cruise, will give you the fastest speed. Page three is your descent profile. VPA is the vertical path angle for VNAV descent. The default setting is 3.0. The minimum descent angle is 1.0 and the maximum is 4.0 degrees. And when you're happy with the changes, press execute. Before we go to the takeoff ref section, verify your desired thrust setting for takeoff. Click perf and this will take you to the thrust limit menu. There are two pages. On the second page, you have three thrust options to choose from. 
normal takeoff thrust TO is set by default. Flex offers a reduced thrust setting and MTO max takeoff offers the most thrust. Consult the included documentation by Hot Start for detailed steps on flex and MTO settings. For this video, we will use normal thrust TO. Next, let's set up our takeoff ref pages. From this page, click perf init, then take off. Or click the perf key twice to go to the perf menu and select take off. There are four pages. On page one, verify the departure airport is displayed. In our case, Memphis. Assuming your flight plan is set up and you have a runway selected, the runway and its length are displayed. On this page, the minimum data point required is the outside air temperature OAT. The altimeter setting QNH will draw the data from your currently set QNH on your PFD. But this field can be modified as desired. When inputting wind data, the runway wind field will populate with the calculated headwind and crosswind component. The runway length is drawn from the FMS database. However, we can modify the length as needed. For example, if you want to do an intersection takeoff or part of the runway has been notamed and reduced, you can enter the distance manually. Notice the number font become bigger, implying it is a manual input. The runway ID will go blank when this occurs. To revert back to its original distance, press the clear delete key and the line select key next to runway length, restoring its original length. We can change between feet and meters using the F and M keys. The runway slope can be modified from minus 2 to plus 2%. As an alternative to the plus and minus key, you can use the U and D keys for up and down. Next, set the runway conditions as needed. This will have a large impact on takeoff distance, which we will cover on the next page. On page 2, we can enter a calculated CG. Currently, the best way to do this is to download an app from the Apple Store called CL604 Weight and Balance. As of this video, this app is available only for the Apple iOS. If you are unable to use this app, don't worry, this field is not required. It simply gives you the best trim setting for takeoff so that you don't over or under rotate during takeoff. A setting between 4.5 and 5 units works good. As discussed in a previous video, as long as the trim setting is within the green band, you are good to go. Finally, we've got our calculated takeoff and gross weights. MTOW is the maximum takeoff weight based on everything we've entered so far. TOFL, takeoff field length, is the longest of three calculated distances. Accelerate stop, accelerate go, and normal takeoff distance. Next to that is the runway length. The engine bleed field can be selected off, or we can select specific bleed sources for anti-ice equipment during takeoff, which has an effect on available thrust and ITT limitations. And the last field is the thrust reverser setting, whether you have both or one operating. Page three deals with climb performance, specifically single engine climb performance. OCR, Obstacle Climb Reference, is our calculated single engine climb gradient. We know this aircraft's climb performance can exceed most instrument departure requirements with two engines. But in the real world, we plan for worst case scenarios such as an engine failure during takeoff. Climb performance, notably single engine climb performance, becomes a factor when the aircraft is heavy, the airport is at a high altitude, the temperature is hot, and the airport environment includes mountains and or tall obstacles nearby.
the Dux 5 departure off runway 18 center calls for a climb gradient of 500 feet per nautical mile to 860 feet MSL mean sea level. The FMS requires an input that is above ground level AGL and with Memphis a few hundred feet above sea level we will need to do a little math. We will take the 860 foot altitude and subtract the Memphis airport altitude of 341 feet giving us 519 feet. Round that up to the nearest 100 for good measure, giving us 600 feet. Enter 600 in the level off height field. Then enter 500 in the required climb gradient field. And the obstacle clearance limit will update with a new maximum takeoff weight. Conversely, you can enter the height of a known obstacle and known distance from the runway end, and the FMS will calculate the required climb gradient. What we are looking for is no amber indication, which would indicate our OCR climb gradient does not meet or exceed the required climb gradient. When a required climb gradient is not published, use the standard gradient of 200 feet per nautical mile. In summary, for the average sim user operating with a perfect airplane and zero systems failures, this page is not relevant and can be skipped. In the real world, many pilots and operators use third-party apps and flight planning services to calculate takeoff and landing performance. One of the most widely used apps is iPreFlight by APG. Here are some screenshots of my APG app for the King Air 350. For additional discussion on the Challenger 650's single engine performance, check out the Foxtrot Alpha Aviation channel on YouTube. He is a Challenger 650 pilot and has discussed this page in a few of his videos. Page 4 displays additional climb limits. In a nutshell, if the structural limit is not a factor, this page shows what the aircraft could theoretically weigh and still show positive climb performance. Alright, let's go back to page 2 of 4 and click send to finalize the v-speeds and send them to the PFD. They will appear in a magenta color to signify that these are FMS calculated speeds. On a final note, if a manual change of weight, outside air temperature, barometric pressure, or any parameter that affects v-speed computation is made after the v-speeds have been sent to the PFD, the FMS will delete the V-speeds from the PFD and display an amber V-speeds deselected message. Simply verify the new data and click send again. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, please drop them below in the comment section. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.